So someone made a game about taxes. Well, actually, it was three people. Daryl Wagner, a former Internal Revenue Service employee, Todd Clark Home, an investment advisor, and John Simmons. These three men came up with the idea and design for tax avoiders on the Atari 2600. The game was programmed by Dunhill Electronics, and it was published by the extremely short-lived company American Video Game. Tax Avoiders is the only game that they published, and next to U.S. games, they have the most annoyingly generic name. The game that they came up with is exactly what you should expect from people like this. It's not a very good-looking game, it doesn't control all that well, and it is all about getting a high score, which in this case is represented by money. And you really need to have read the instruction manual to know just what the hell is going on and what you're supposed to do. Because if you just pick this up, it's not entirely clear. The game actually does have an ending point, which is one calendar year. And that's pretty much it. There's nothing else to the game. You go around collecting dollar symbols and also these weird red things, which... I have no idea exactly what they do, but then you get teleported to this other level where you're climbing up ladders and trying to avoid an IRS agent who is constantly changing colors. Those colors actually do mean something, and yeah, it's not a very good game. Looking up information on either American Video Game or Tax Avoiders is really frustrating. The only thing that points to the company's existence is the game. Because American Video Game did not release a second game, there's really not a whole lot out there. Every source I could find had little to no information on the company. It's also a nightmare just to search for this stupid company because they used a they used a name that's incredibly generic. So you type in American Video Game, spelled the way they spell it, and yeah, you get a whole bunch of crap that is not even remotely related to what you're looking for. It can be just incredibly frustrating. It reminded me of trying to find information on U.S. games. The difference is there is a lot of information on U.S. games out there because it's tied to other companies, and they released a bunch of games. Even though it does have a generic name, you can still find stuff about them. American Video Game is even more generic than that, and unfortunately, this appears to have been just an independent company that these three guys set up, and there's nothing on them, really. Even when Ian Bogust, uh, in his 2007 book, Persuasive Video Games, when he kind of covered this to talk a little bit about tax avoiders, he doesn't mention anything about the company, and he didn't really dig too deep into it, which I can kind of understand. So, unlike U.S. Games and many other companies out there, it seems like American Video Game has just been sort of lost to time, and any information about it is just gone. So after hitting a dead end with American Video Game, I decided to move on to Dunhill Electronics, since it's listed as doing the programming for this game. I'm guessing they were the developers, and the three people that are listed worked for them in some way, or they created Dunhill Electronics, because this company is equally just poorly archived. I couldn't find anything about them either. The only game they developed is Tax Avoiders, so yeah, that's fun. So now I've got American Video Game and Dunhill Electronics that are both just complete mysteries to me. Then I moved on to the three people to try to figure out just what the hell is going on with this thing. Two of them are not credited with anything else in the video game industry. However, John Simmons is. He is credited with one other video game, and that is Porky's for the Atari 2600. 
This means that at some time he worked for 20th Century Fox, either as an independent contractor or he was tied to another company that was contracted out to 20th Century Fox. So at least there's that. Daryl Wagner and Todd Holm are the only other people credited on Tax Avoiders. I can't find another game that they worked on, and it isn't even clear how involved they were with this. Both worked in finance, which points to their involvement in probably the creative process, since they probably didn't have a programming background. I kind of started wondering just what their goal was, besides making money off of the video game market. Tax Avoiders was released in 1982, so the market hadn't fallen apart yet. At this point, it just isn't really clear if they had planned any other games or anything like that. Both Dunhill Electronics and American Video Games seem to have just disappeared after publishing Tax Avoiders. So, yeah, we can say they didn't get taken out by the video game crash, they just sort of got taken out by the, I'm assuming, low sales of Tax Avoiders. Just based on what I'm seeing with Tax Avoiders and after, you know, kind of suffering through this game a little bit, they probably wouldn't have lasted long through 1983 anyway, which adds a little bit more mystery to this whole thing. And I kind of just ran into a series of dead ends and didn't really know where to go with this after that. I'm unsure what happened to the three people who are named on this cartridge. They probably went on to have happy lives and did other stuff. Simmons is the only one that seems to have tried to continue on in the video game industry, and I don't know if he stayed with it throughout the 80s and into the 90s, because there's just nothing on him after that. I can only assume that this was just a one-off company that was created to release this game, and then it disappeared. Maybe the game sales weren't what they expected, or perhaps there was some other deciding factor in it. It's just an absolute mystery. I couldn't even find reviews for this game, which was kind of surprising because I figured that they would have at least tried to get this out there to be reviewed by someone back in the 80s, but that doesn't seem to have happened. I also wasn't able to find any advertisements for it, but they're probably out there, maybe. I'll have to keep looking for a whole bunch of other stuff on this if I ever get bored sometime. Tax Avoiders was released in 1982, and Porky's was released in 1983. Porky's has several names attached to it. Uh, one screen does look very similar to Tax Avoiders, but with better graphics. It wouldn't surprise me to learn that each person who worked on the game was focused on a different section of it, whereas Tax Avoiders, I'm assuming it was all programmed by Simmons, and it wouldn't, wasn't really programmed with the involvement from the other two people, which just adds more confusion to who Dunhill Electronics was, but that's going to be something for another time when I really need to dig into it. Um there are a number of similarities between the two games, and it seems pretty clear that the developer used what he learned on Tax Avoiders and went on to make something with Porky's, particularly the level with the shower where your little guy is climbing up and down the ladders. That really does look a lot like Tax Avoiders. After working on Porky's, John Simmons would just disappear from the gaming industry, at least from what I can tell. He could have gone just uncredited on some other games because that was a thing at the time, or he could have moved on to something else. This one connection adds a little bit more mystery to this whole fiasco that is American video game. They, yeah, they, they just kind of disappeared, and at least John tried to keep going and tried to work in the video game industry on some other stuff, and the other two just sort of disappeared. It's a very strange tale that I don't have all the facts to, and I don't think I'm ever going to get them. So after running into 
just every dead end that I possibly could, I did something I don't normally do when I research these companies. I decided to look more into the people that were associated with tax avoiders and American Video Game. While this did point me to Porky's, it turned up some some of just the harsh realities of trying to write about the history of these games. It looks like two of the three people involved with tax avoiders have passed away. It is kind of sad to see this. Whatever story they might have told about this game seems to just be gone. I didn't turn up any interviews or anything like that with them. And yeah, it's kind of sad when you go and you look up stuff like this and you find out that the answers you're looking for are just never going to be brought up. I wish I could end this a little bit more happily, but that's it. There really isn't anything else to this story. I'll keep looking if I ever get bored, but I don't think there's much more to really find on this. It's just one of those weird mysteries of the early video game industry where a company showed up, tried to do something, and for whatever reason it didn't pan out and then they just went away. Thankfully, I don't have to talk about the video game crash, or at least the North American video game crash, because this happened before it. There are probably a bunch of little companies like this that started up and went away, and that's something that still happens to this day, but at least the video games that they make now are just a little bit better tracked and a little bit better archived than they were back then. Anyway, that's going to wrap things up. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.